I suppose I will start at the very beginning. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there lived you. Despite his unusual name, his life was hardly any different from others. It was an unusually usual day when he was getting ready to go to work. Two hours of sleep, what a formality, he said to himself glancing at his watch. He was used to working at night, just as he was used to never having days off. That morning, the buttons on his shirt were fastened faster than usual. This was not by chance. The tear-off calendar boldly declared Friday, April 3rd. It reminded him that there were only three work days before his holiday, and there was no room for mistakes. His room in a communal apartment was not very big, so it did not take him long to pack. Having got dressed, he quietly walked past the neighbor's rooms into the hallway. Somebody was snoring loudly in the furthest room which caused you to smile for some reason. He walked up to the front door and accidentally stepped on a pile of letters. Picking up the envelopes, he saw his name on one of them. You automatically put it in his pocket and walked out. The thought that next Sunday, a huge stone would be removed from the entrance to the crypt of his existence by the power of labor legislation kept you going. The trip to work took him by several blocks. He considered early morning to be an extremely pleasant time of day. Universal euphoria. Although euphoria usually precedes inevitable death. As soon as he went into the park, he saw a kid in ragged clothes running away from a pack of stray dogs. His eyes caught a swiftly ticking clock hand. It was unclear what had made you so anxious, fear of dogs or of being late to work. He distanced himself from reality refused to play any role except that of an outside observer. However, he had had no chance to interfere. The picture of the kid falling down on the ground, breaking skin on his knees, flashed before his eyes. Then of the dogs, losing all interest in him after that. You immediately felt nauseous Everything went dark, and it seemed to him that he was looking at himself through the eyes of the kid. Just like when he was a child. Deja vu! In order to justify his actions to himself, he took the handkerchief with his initials and handed it to the kid. Before the latter could say anything, you ran away to avoid further conversation. In a hurry, he went in the wrong direction, unaware of it until he ran into a locked gate on his way. He casually turned around and went to work. He was almost there when he saw his boss enter the office building. He took it as his personal failure, although his watch showed that he still had several minutes. You barely got into the office when he noticed two male silhouettes behind him. He turned around to see his boss and a man he had never seen before a little further away. Figuring that they would have to be introduced to each other, he turned to the stranger first. Let me introduce myself, you. 
My name is Frank. And you? To avoid unnecessary explanations, you took a name tag from his table and pointed to it. Yes, despite the fact that there was no live communication with clients, the work charter required name tags, probably to remember his name. Wow, that's a very unusual name. Nice to meet you. It is the only unusual detail of my life. An awkward pause hung in the air. The boss, standing behind Frank, frowned and cast a reproachful glance at you. Frank is our security guard starting today. Oh, we have nothing to... A security guard. Some of my important documents are missing. There are only two of us. What kind of documents? That I cannot tell you. You mean you suspect me? No, I do not. Eliminating any opportunity to continue this conversation, the boss turned around and went into his office. The room plunged into silence. You got down to some clerical work. You found a moment and took the morning letter out of his pocket. Glancing at the address line, a chill went through Yu's body for a split second. From Darina. Yu was confused by the seal on the envelope, indicating the place of departure. No leave, Grant. Is she really coming back to Kenlot? He said out loud. Suddenly, there was a curious voice saying, Who is coming? You did not answer and continued reading. Dear you, my doctor's suspicions are confirmed. I have the same disease that struck you. I thought it over and decided that we need to break up. It may seem that something like this should bring people closer, but it would be unfair to myself. We can have our last date on the morning of April 3rd in the Seafront Cafe, and then I will leave Cannot and go abroad. He felt dizzy. Another working day turned into night. The newly appointed watchman dozed off at his improvised post, an ordinary chair at the entrance to the office. Yu was sitting at his sturdy desk, imagining again and again how the shelves, stocked with books on jurisprudence, would break loose due to their own weight from friable concrete and break his head. Allowing himself a little break, Yu took his diary from his table drawer and made a note. I never took a plate of soup at school luncheons, even when I really wanted to. I was afraid to spill it in front of everyone, but I could put it on the table, which seems to be my life's pattern. Feeling some satisfaction from writing that, he resumed work. There was a rustle of the janitor's broom and the trill of birds outside the window. More accurate than the clock, you thought. Chapter 2 